So I'm just going to show you a real quick example of, of how to use this business canvas and what it's actually set up as. So I'm going to use a very old example, Apple. Everybody's aware of what the iPod is and how it came to market. And so it can serve as an easy way of illustrating how this all fits together. So the value proposition they had was this seamless music experience. So it's not just about the iPod itself or music. It's really what they wanted to do was they wanted to create an experience. That was the important thing rather than um, just a physical, you know, side product. Going from there, customer segment, mass market, not much explanation needed there. Um, but they already had existing relationships they had to be very aware of. And this idea of love marking is a whole idea about how do we ensure brand loyalty? How do we make sure that what we have currently right now remains with us? And then they had to take a look at the idea, okay, we have a lot of people that already buy into our brand. What, are, what is the cost associated with switching them from one method of delivery to another? That was uh, the thing they were looking at in terms of the relationships, the channels, retail stores, apple.com and then how they were going to actually generate their revenue. And the revenue here, you know, they had the hardware of the iPod unit itself, they had the music revenue, which was, you know, a lesser concern to them, and then they have the iTunes store, which actually grew in a very different way. On the other side, uh, they had to have key partnerships with the record labels. If the labels didn't buy into this, this whole entire venture would have fallen flat on its face. And uh, OEMs as well. Um, key activities, obviously they had to construct the hardware, there was design, there, and there's a whole marketing campaign that obviously Apple has, uh, has undertaken to get the you know, iTunes and the iPod to market. Key resources, people, the brand themselves, hardware and software, and then the cost structure itself, right? So they have cost structure of the people and the staff that have maintained marketing, manufacturing, sales. Right, so you can see how the relationship of the business model canvas is very straightforward and simple to think about what I'm actually trying to do and then I can map it through this whole entire system. Another really quick example using a gaming company. So th and what I wanted to show here is the real power of the business canvas is that I can now explore different kinds of valuations for my company in a really easy way. So if I was ultimately a gaming company and what I was concerned with is I want to pre present, let's say, a gaming experience and this is the most important thing, I could take a step back and say, well, what about something else? You know, something like a personal service. Do we, we want to have some connection to the primary gaming relationships that we already have? and you know, possibly some retail approach. Right? So it just allows me to explore without doing a whole business plan and costing out and, and really expensive process to get there. Right? So in the same thing, based on those same relationships, I can say, okay, well, if I'm looking at the gaming experience, the most important age or, or uh, customer segment they're looking is this age group. But if I start to go through my other value propositions, I can see that I can maybe expand what my customer segments are to include different groups and maybe uh, generate revenue in different ways. All right. The other thing that you can do with the business model canvas is saying, well, I only have customer relationships based on my first value proposition. So I also can identify gaps within my business. So that if I have, all right, but well my model does not account for the existing relationship with retail partners, what am I going to do about that? And how would I actually build that out? Um, same thing comes in with channels. I might have existing channels that I'm going to use. Very straightforward and, and understandable uh, things that are already part of what my current business model is, but how would I extend those? And the same with the revenue schemes, right? So now we're going to um, include things like subscription or fee-for-service basis. How would that affect what I need um, within my business? And are we prepared for it? Is this something that we actually want to uh, incorporate into our business? All right, on the other side, again, uh, you know, all right, so because we're in the gaming community, or say iTunes was our primary deliverer, that's our partnership that we have to maintain, may exist, may not exist, and you can start to build these things out. <coughs> Same with the uh, key resources, and finally the cost structures to take a look at. So the whole idea, I just wanted to just point out that the business model canvas gives you a lot of flexibility to explore a lot of things and see them all in the same place. So instead of doing independent plans for each of them, I could see in the relationships that I have between one value proposition and another, are there gaps within my business? Are, does this make sense for us to actually pr uh, pursue as, as you know, actual um, activities that our business would take on? 
All right. So from the use of the business model canvas, there are a lot of patterns that exist within uh, the business world. And we can take a look at what would happen if I have my existing model and I applied some of these patterns. So let's say that I am a gaming company and I want to unbundle what my services do. Right? So instead of just doing product generation, I want to do this plus something else. Well, that's the idea of unbundling. A uh, freemium model, is there a way that we can offer something free to our customer base and have them respond and then come in the back door and allow them to upgrade their services? So, you know, there's a lot of different patterns and there's a ways, again, to explore how our business might respond um, either presently or in the future if we looked at these different ideas about how our models are going to fit together. So the freemium model is just, you know, one of these patterns that I wanted to, uh, to identify. Um, using YouTube as a really easy example, what their primary concern was was putting videos out there. It's a free idea, except you know, and and so this gets a number of customers. It gets attached to what their their brand is and what their offer is, and then they actually generate revenue based on the advertising and other things. And it's a, it's, it's a common uh, it's a common pattern that's used. I mean, Skype uses it. Other ones, uh, lots of other businesses do, but it's a very easy way to say if I took this pattern, and I actually plunked it over top of what my current business model is. How would my business respond? All right. Um, I just wanted to show you some of the examples. The nice thing about the way that the business canvas, uh, canvas uh, comes about, it's not static. It's a very fluid way of communicating to whoever my current stakeholders are, whether it's internal within my business or external. So, you know, using graphic representations, um, color coding so I can show how the relationships between my value propositions would actually work. Um, it can be highly visual, all right? And this just depends on the scope of, of you know, who my audience is that I want to communicate, what is the advantage of doing that. But the flexibility is that you know, it gives a creative feel to how I'm actually looking at my business. It's not all just very rigid. It's like, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to use my imagination and hopefully develop um, some rigor around the design and you know, the expression of what my business model can actually be. So one of the most, uh, oh, this is the, uh, um, I'll bring up the uh, references, but this is the iPod, uh, uh, iPad app that, uh, um, that you can um, download, and uh, I'll go through the toolbox in, um, at the end. Um, but one of the most important things about the way that the business model canvas can be used is really in a collaborative approach. It's nothing more than I have these relationships, I have a whole bunch of stickies, and you know, a group of us can come together and we communicate through, okay, we can move around these different pieces. Does this actually meet with what our business is? And it's a very interactive and iterative approach, right? So, uh, you know, this, this is really the most common use for the business model canvas. I can take it away in isolation and hopefully I can build out my perfect model and everything will be fine. But realistically, you're going to do it within a group and you want to communicate back to that group how this, uh, you know, this whole process came about. You might learn some interesting things, but having these different perspectives on what one common communication piece is, is really a, the advantage of, of moving forward with you know, this business model generation.